of San Domingo lived a girl called her by Jingo. Ta da 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 da. From the fields and from the marshes came the old and young. My gosh, it's ta da 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 da. Um, ba, 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 ba. They all spoke with a different lingo, but they all loved O oh, by Jingo. And every night they sang in the pale moonlight. Oh by G, by gosh, by gum, by Joe. Oh by Jingo, won't you hear our love? We will build for you a hut. You will be our favorite nut. You'll have a lot of little oh by Jingos, pink and white, just like flamingos. Oh no, Chief, that bit really goes ta da 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 Sends shivers down my spine, Jeeves. Well, perhaps if you would put your jacket on, you would feel the cold less keenly, sir. It has nothing to do with cold, Jeeves. Miss Stoker will be here at any moment, sir. I'm sure we wouldn't wish to be discovered in a state of undress. You love these songs about foreign parts, Jeeves. You know, last year it was Indian Love Call and Nagasaki. I am particularly fond of sunny Havana City of Light, sir. Oh, Jeeves, how is it that you manage to turn any conversation around to your dratted obsession about us going to Cuba? Nothing could have been further from my mind, sir. I merely... No, Jeeves. I am not traipsing halfway around the globe simply to enable you to dangle a hook in the water in the hope of catching a couple of haddock. Hardly, sir. The tarpon or Megalops Atlanticus was more the prey I had in mind. No, Jeeves, no. Content yourself with, with musical evocations of these places as I do. Oh, by gee, by gosh, by gum, by Jove. Oh, by Jingo, won't you hear our love? We will build for you a hut, you will be our favourite nut. We'll have a lot of little old by Joveses, dress them up in clogs and clotheses. Good afternoon, Miss Stoker. Good afternoon, Jeeves. Emerald, old thing. Hi, Birdie. Mm. I didn't know you were musical. Neither does Jeeves. Gargle? Oh, yes, please. So, how are you, Emerald? How's the old art school? Pretty good. We're on vacation right now. I just came round to say au revoir. I'm going down to the country this afternoon for a month. On a whole month, all in the same place? Of course. Good Lord. I've never found anyone who would stick my company with for more than about a week. Oh, Bertie. Yeah, that's absolutely true. As a matter of fact, long before that, the conversation at dinner is apt to turn to the subject of how good the train service to London is. Down the hatch. These people's name is Bassett. They live in Gloucestershire in a house called... Totley Towers. Do you know them? Good Lord, yes. I've only met Madeline Bassett. What are the rest of them like? Well, Sir Watkin Bassett looks like the before photograph in an advertisement for indigestion pills. <laughs> Miss Bassett said her fiancé is going to be there too. Yes, I suppose you might. Gussie Fingottle. No. Well, it seems unlikely. Uh, no, I mean, I know him. But nobody knows Gussie. Spends all his time in Lincolnshire. With his newts. I met him at a party. I thought he was a lamb. No, I mean a fish. Looks like a halibut. He does not look like a halibut. Gussie? Oh, hello, Bertie. I can't stop. I've got to catch the 130 from Paddington. Oh, well, you could look out for a friend of yours on the train. Emerald Stoker. Says she met you at a party. Oh, yes. We had a really nice talk about newts. I don't know when I've met a girl who's attracted me more. Except, of course, Madeline. Madeline? Don't talk to me about Madeline. Madeline makes me sick. Gussie? Well, it's true. Oh, by the way, Stephanie wants you to come down to Totley for a few days. Some hopes. Afternoon, Rogers. Good afternoon, sir. to the Matrop, Stinker. I came up for a Harlequins committee meeting. A what committee meeting? Harlequins. The rugby club. Oh, good. How's Stephanie? Oh, I don't know, Bertie. There's still no sign of me getting enough money for us to marry. Why hasn't Pop Bassett given you that victory yet? No. I think it was about ready to close the deal last week, but I uh, bumped into a valuable vase of his and broke it. He said he couldn't trust me with a delicate piece of equipment like Stiffy. Stiffy wants me to come down to Totley, doesn't she? Distance. Works, what works? How did you know that Stiffy 
wants you to come down. I just met Gussie in the vestibule. Oh. Oh, I see. To tell you the truth, Bertie, there's odd things going on at Topley. Supernatural things. Anyway, there's something Stiffy wants you to do for her. You're not yourself, Stinker, or you wouldn't be gibbering like this. I know, Stiffy, you know, I'd, I'd run a mile in tight shoes for her, but she lacks that, that balanced judgment that one likes to see in girls. Now, what is this commission that she has in mind for me? Uh, she said she'd rather keep it under her hat until she saw you. She won't see me. She'll be terribly disappointed. You will administer spiritual solace. <sighs> Goodbye, Stinker. Good afternoon, sir. Your master is an extremely worried man, Jeeves. Sir? No, stop playing with the hat, Jeeves. I knew you wouldn't like it. Well, not at all, sir. Oh, good heavens, it has its name printed on the inside. How convenient. The Alpine. Did you purchase the article in a shop, sir? Well, of course I bought it in a shop, Jeeves. A department store. Oh, I see, sir, yes. One reads about such places, of course. I was merely wondering whether they also stopped the leather trousering, which would undoubtedly set it off to full effect. Put the hat away, Jeeves. I have just seen Gussie Fignottle. I happened to mention Miss Bassett's name. He said, and follow me closely here, Jeeves. Very good, sir. He said, quote, don't talk to me about Madeline. Madeline makes me sick. Close quotes. Well, now, these are not the words of love, Jeeves. No, sir. No, these are the words of a man cheesed to the back teeth with the adored object. I didn't have time to get all the details, but if Gussie, as pronounced a fathead as ever broke biscuit, feels compelled to give Madeline the heave-ho, well, then I'm the next in line. Steps must be taken, Jeeves. It would certainly seem advisable, sir. But what steps? Perhaps a trip to Totley Towers is called for, sir. Ah, but there's another snag. Stiffy Bing has something she wants me to do for her. Well, you know the sort of thing Stiffy generally wants people to do. You recall that episode with Constable Oates' helmet? Mm, with some vividity, sir. But would it not be possible for you to go to Totley Towers but to decline to carry out Miss Bing's wishes? Or issue a nolle prosequi, you mean? Tell her to go and boil her head? Precisely, sir. You do recall Miss Bing, do you, Jeeves? Still, it's the best we can do, I suppose. All right, get a telegram off to Miss Bassett, will you? Oh, dark forces are drawing us towards Totley, Jeeves. Still, Friday ought to be soon enough, don't you think? Tomorrow might be more prudent, sir. Eh? you yearn to see me again, however hopelessly. But is it wise? I love Augustus. Oh, well, that's absolutely... It makes me sad to think of your hopeless love, Bertie, like the moss and the star. But what can I do? Nothing, nothing at all. You, you carry on regardless. But it breaks my heart. <laughs> oh, no, look here, Madeline. Madeline, what's the matter? It's nothing, Madeline. Nothing. Cucumber sandwich? You've made her cry, you heartless swine. Now, 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 look here, Spode. You have come here like a creeping snake to try and sow doubts in her mind about the one she loves. No, no, no. You still hope to win her away from Fink Nottle. Let me tell you, Worcester. I have loved that girlie for years and years, but never by word or look have I so much as hinted at it to her. I shall be watching you, Worcester. Watching you closely. Be very, very careful. careful. I want to see. I've got a little job for you. Well, Stiffy, how nice to see you looking so well. You are well, I trust. And I'm not doing any little jobs. Oh, Bertie, don't be such a stick. It will only take you five minutes. Hey, you! Don't wander all over the house like that. Well, well I... Have a minute. I know you. You're that fellow Worcester. Madeline asked Bertie down, Uncle Watkin. Madeline did. 
How long for? Uh, well, a week was mentioned. No. Good God. Well, welcome to Totley. I must have a talk with Madeline. Well, Jeeves, Totley is still the hellhole we know and love. Indeed, sir. But, Jeeves, and it's a but the size of Hyde Park, I have it straight from the horse's mouth that Miss Bassett and Gussie are sweethearts still. I fear you may be too sanguine, sir. Miss Bassett's sentiments may be such as you have described, but on Mr. Finknottle's side there exists no little dissatisfaction. You mean she's a sweetheart still, but he isn't? Precisely, sir. I encountered Mr. Finknottle in the stable yard when I was putting away the car. His story has occasioned me grave unease. Jeeves, I have the unpleasant feeling that centipedes are sauntering up and down my spinal column in large numbers waiting to their friends. What's happened? Miss Bassett has insisted that Mr. Finknottle adopt a vegetarian diet, sir. What do you mean? Spinach and similar garbage? So I gather, sir. Well, no wonder Gussie said that Madeline made him feel sick. Blast all vegetables, say I. Uh, the cook expressed herself in similar vein when Mr. Finknottle explained his predicament to her, sir. It melted her heart in sympathy for his distress. Well, I'm not sure I'm in the mood to hear about cook's hearts, Jeeves, melted or otherwise. Nevertheless, sir, she did instruct Mr. Finknottle that if he was agreeable to visiting the kitchen during the hours of darkness when the house had retired for the night, she would very happily supply him with cold steak and kidney pie. Oh, Jeeves, this is wonderful. Cold steak and kidney pie is, of course, merely a palliative, sir. <gasps> On the contrary, Jeeves, it's Gus's favourite dish. Does about 90 miles to the slice. Oh, with you, Bertie. Yes, Gussie. The very same, except no substitute. What are you doing? I was hoping there might be some nuts with the cocktails, but no. Do you know what it's like to be perpetually hungry, Bertie? Courage, Gussie. Think of the old S and K. F and K. Second kidney. Shh. That cook sounds like an angel in human form. She is, as you know. No, I don't know. I haven't had the pleasure. Of course you have. It's Emerald Stoker. Emerald Stoker is the cook. It appears he's dependent on a monthly allowance from her father in New York. But earlier this month, he put everything on Sunny Dim in the three o'clock at Kempton. Sad, sad. Where she could have touched me? My dear Bertie, a girl like that doesn't borrow money. Much too proud. Harold is in sole charge of the school treat this year. Oh, well done, Stinker. Uncle Watkin is going to give him a vicarage and we'll be able to get married. We'll see, my dear. We'll see. Sir Watkins kindly allowing us to exhibit his collection of silver. We're putting up a special tent for it. Gussie could bring some newts. What? To the school treat. It would be interesting for people to look at newts. I'm not going to have my newts stared at by all and sundry. Also, Madeline, I don't see why you're allowed to eat roast beef when you're meant to be a vegetarian. Oh, Gussie. How could you? How cruel! You devil in human form, Fink Muttle. Well, I do. You know perfectly well Madeline has to eat meat for medical reasons. She's delicate. I hate every mouthful. It's torture. Well, it doesn't look like torture to me. Oh, Gussie! <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Fink Muttle. That's new, isn't it, Sir Watkin? What? That thing in the middle of the table. Attractive little bijou. Uncle Watkin bought it from a man named Plank, who lives over in hockley cum meston It's worth the thousand pounds, but it's evil. It should never have been allowed into the house. Rot, Stephanie. It's a perfectly ordinary African tribal totem. Oh, well, golly. Soapstone, is it? Amber. Black amber. It's got a curse on it. It's been nothing but bad luck. Hmm. Bertie! What is Divi? Come in here. That black statue thing.
anything on the table at dinner. Why do you think Major Plank let Uncle Watty have it for five pounds? Five pounds? I thought you said it was a thousand. I said it was worth that. When your uncle, Tom Travers, was over here, Uncle Watty told him that he'd spotted it on this fellow Plank's mantelpiece and had told Plank that it was worth practically nothing, but that he'd give him a fiver for it. He gloated over how clever he'd been. Little did he know. What do you mean, little did he know? It has got a curse on it. <sighs> oh, what rot. Since it arrived here, there's been nothing but accidents. Well, didn't you feel the evil power emanating from it? No. It's changing Uncle Watkin, too. He's getting nasty and short-tempered. <sighs> well, now, wait a minute, Stiffy. I, I hate to be the one to break this to you, but your Uncle Watkin has always been nasty and short-tempered. The midwife who delivered him remarked on it. No, it's different now. It's the power of that terrible thing. That's why he won't give Harold a vicarage so that we can get married. And that's why you're going to steal it. Oh, no, 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 Stiffy. No, I told you, no little jobs. Then you take it back to Plank and get him to give you five pounds for it. Why could you just throw it away? You can't do that. If you did that, you'd bring the curse down on yourself. No, it has to go back to the last person in the chain. And if money changed hands, then exactly the same amount must change hands again. No, Stiffy, I, I'm sorry, but I have never in my life heard such an earful of unadulterated gammon. No, 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 no. And no, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm issuing a nolle prosequi on this one. A most extraordinary thing happened last night, Bertie. I wasn't here. No. At about two o'clock, I woke up and heard someone creeping about. Well, you know how those stairs creak. Anyway, I got up and saw Gussie sneaking down to the kitchen. The door was open a crack and I peered in. And there was the cook, shoveling cold steak and kidney pie into Gussie, like a stevedore loading a green ship. Yeah, really? Well, yes, very interesting. Isn't it? The thought flashed into my mind there and then that if Madeline got to hear about this, poor old Gussie would be given the bum's rush before he knew what had hit him. Well, yes, if. And you know who'd be next in line? You wouldn't tell her. You know how indiscreet I am, Bertie. Oh, Stiffy, this is blackmail. Why can't you pinch the blasted statue yourself? Suppose I got caught. Tonight, eh, Bertie? Oh, Stiffy. One would have thought it would have been within the scope of even your limited abilities to press a light switch. You never think of that, then, do you? What are you holding behind your back, Worcester? Back? Back! Yes, you've heard the word before, I presume. Oh, back, rather, yes. It's back, front, side, other side. So what is it you have there? Let me see your hands, Worcester! This instant! Shoot him, Watkin. Don't show him any mercy. Hands, Worcester. Oh, hands. Right. Oh. Tinkety tonk. I 
don't know what I'd do without you, Jeeves. Come in, my dear fellow, come in. Make yourself comfortable, my dear fellow. I'll just get these boots off. See me in the centre there, holding the ball. My last year at school. I skip at the side that season. Oh, really? You fond of rugger? God, I've never got into it. No. Good God. Mind you, I didn't get much of it after leaving school. They stationed me in West Africa. Really? Tried to teach the natives the game, but had to give it up. Too many deaths. Yeah, it's got a bit tricky for a while. Deaths? Well, hard ground, you see, and the heat. Still retired now, and I'm going to make Hockley come best on the best rugger village in Gloucestershire. But what we need, though, is a good prop forward, and I'll be damned if I can find one. Still, you don't want to hear all this. You want to hear about my Brazilian expedition. Oh, you've been to Brazil. Well, didn't you know I'd been to Brazil? Nobody tells me anything. You are the chap from the Daily Express. No. Oh, oh, good Lord, I thought you must be the chap who wanted to talk to me about my Brazilian explorations. Oh, you're an explorer. Does the name Herbert Plank mean nothing to you? Is your name Plank? Well, of course it is. What an odd coincidence. You know, I've been looking for a character called Plank. I have here a sort of a... sort of a whatnot. Where did you get that? If you just give me five pounds for it. You've stolen that! So that's it! I've got your number now. You won't get any five pounds from me, my man. I'm going to call the police. That won't be necessary, sir. Who the devil are you? Chief Inspector Witherspoon, sir. Scotland Yard. Has this man been attempting to obtain monies from you, sir? Yes. <laughs> Can't say I'm surprised. We've had our eye on this one for a long time now. I suspected from the first. Nasty hangdog look he's got. See that statuette he's holding? I sold that to Sir Watkin Bassett for a thousand pounds. And he has the cool cheek to try and sell it to me for five pounds. He's stolen it, of course. Did he indeed, sir? Well, with your permission, I shall impound the object, sir. We'll be needing that as evidence. Come along, Joe. The game is up. Thank you for your help, Major Plank. Alpine Joe, we call him, sir, on account of his peculiar headgear. Yeah, he's got it with him now. Yes, he never moves without it, so you'd think he'd have the sense to adopt some rude disguise. But then the likes of you and I will never understand the criminal mind. Come on, Joe. What on earth is going on, Jeeves? The truth about the statuette transaction came to light, sir. What truth? Which transaction? There is no foundation for the story that Sir Watkin told Mr. Travers, sir. In actual fact, he did pay Major Plank a thousand pounds for the object. Well, why on earth did he tell Uncle Tom merely a bit of fiver? He acted from a desire to exasperate Mr. Travers, sir. Mr. Travers is a collector, and collectors are never pleased when they learn that a rival has acquired an objet d'art of great value at a nugatory price. Uh, if you could let me off here, sir. Why do you want to get out here? Sir Watkin has now discovered the absence of the statuette, sir. Constable Oates and the Earl of Sidcup are conducting the investigation together. Oh, my Lord, Jeeves. Two minds with not a single thought. Indeed, sir. I think it wise if I alight here with the statuette and smuggle it into the dining room.
right, Mr. Worcester, sir. You stay right where you are, sir, while I searches of you. No, you blasted well don't. Is he giving you trouble, Oates? Don't you worry yourself, Lord Sidcup, sir. I has my own ways of dealing with desperados. Well, why didn't you just tell me what it is you're looking for? So Watkins' priceless African totem has disappeared. Oh, rot. Now, Worcester, what do you see? What do you mean, what do I see? Don't porter with me, Worcester. I beg your pardon, Don't Lord interrupt Sidcup, me, Oaks, while I'm interrogating the criminal. Yes, Lord Sidcup. Quiet, man. What your friend is trying to tell you is that there is a singularly unattractive black statuette on the table. What? Is that what you're looking for? You wily devil, Worcester. Pish. What's the meaning of this, Oaks? Well, I was of a joint Don't time. bandy words with me! Don't! Ow! Don't say come, sir. I'm furious with Augustus. Oh, surely not. He was so rude about Roderick. Never. He said to Daddy that he was sick and tired of seeing Roderick clumping about the place as if it belonged to him. And if Daddy had an ounce more sense than a billiard ball, he would charge him rent. He was most offensive. Well, he, he said it with a light laugh. No. Well, he might not have noticed it. Very easy to miss these light laughs. He was harsh and bitter. He's been like this for a long time. Are you sure, Madeline, that you're altogether wise in confining Gussie to carrots and cabbage and the like? He simply needs a mutton chop or two under his belt. But he's not going to have them. If he ever eats the flesh of animals slain in anger, I will have nothing more to do with him. And then she just biffed off. Most disturbing, Sam. Well, there we have it, you see. On the one hand, Madeline's strong anti-flesh bias, and on the other, Gussie's firm determination to get all the cuts off the joint that are coming to him. What, I ask myself, will the harvest be? Well, sir, perhaps you could persuade Mr. Finknottle to apologise to Sir Watkin and Lord Sidcup, and this might ameliorate the tension between himself and Miss Bassett to some extent. Well, I can try it, I suppose. But you know what Mr. Finknottle is like once he gets the bit between his teeth? It's back. I know it's back. I brought it back. Oh, Bertie, you are a complete fool. Well, I like that. It was you who got the story all wrong. Are you going to pick on every little thing I do? Well, you'll just have to get it back to Major Blank again. Well, how can I? He thinks I'm Alpine Joe. Who? Well, anyway, unless he gives me a thousand pounds for it, the curse will fall on me. Well, get him to give you the thousand pounds, then. <clears throat> You'll pardon me for interrupting, Miss Bing, but there may be another way out of this dilemma. The object is a totem for the Ungali people. Is it? The Ungali believe that the tribal chief can shortcut the rather laborious procedure for the return of a totem by personally laying claim to it using a particular form of words. A spell, you mean? I should not like to go so far as to say that, miss, but I have been in telephonic communication with the Zynegian High Commission, and it so happens that the chief of the Ungali is in London at the moment. Chiefs, that's wonderful. The High Commission is of the opinion that the chief will be most interested in recovering the object for his tribe. And you think my uncle is just going to hand it over? I understand that the chief of the Umgali has certain powers, miss, which might make his demands irresistible. Well, I wish him luck with Uncle Watkin. But if we don't stop that thing from influencing him, by making him refuse to give Harold a vicarage, we know what will happen, don't we, Bertie? Oh, now look, Stiffy. Little bird will chirrup in Madeline's ear about Gussie getting illicit steak and kidney. And then Madeline will be looking for a new victim to inflict the turnip torture on. Women always put a damper on things, don't they, Jeeves? They're brought up to believe that it is part of their duty to restrain male optimism, sir. And indeed, in this case, there may be cause for restraint. The High Commission informs me that the Chief will probably be loath to miss tomorrow afternoon's programme of racing at Ascot, sir. Good Lord, Jeeves, what do we do if he doesn't turn up? I can only suggest that somebody impersonates him, sir. Oh, no. No, 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 absolutely not, under no circumstances. But it wouldn't do any good anyway. Unless I actually was the chief, the curse would just be on me again. But you surely don't believe in the curse, sir? Oh, no, that's right, I don't, do I? No. Well, so long as your performance is sufficiently convincing to provoke Sir Watkin into giving you the statuette. Well, it isn't going to convince anyone, Jeeves, because it isn't going to happen. 
Oh, Lord, I'd better go and try and persuade Gussie to apologise to Spode and Sir Watkin. Do you know what I feel like, Jeeves? No, sir. I feel like that little Dutch boy with all his fingers and toes in various holes in the dike. Come in. Oh, hello, Gussie. Oh, hello, Bertie. Do you know that Spode creature tried to search me? Well, yes, actually, that's... What are you doing? I'm putting on my galoshes. What for? I'm going for a walk with Emerald. Or perhaps a row on the river. You can't go for a walk with Emerald. You can't row anyway. No, but Emerald can. See the wonderful Bertie. No, 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 Gussie. I mean, I'm a pleasant enough girl, I suppose. He says I can hold the rope things and steer. He says, if you pull it this way, it goes in this direction. But if you pull it that way, it goes in that direction. See, he knows so many things. Alpine Joe. Detective Inspector Witherspoon? You feeling all right, Plank? Tonight? No, no, no. I'm just going to have my tea. Come, Come over to Totley tomorrow morning. We can talk about it then. What? No. No, I've never heard of Alpine Joe. Nor the other one. Jeans. I fear it might be wise to vacate the house, sir, if Major Plank is expected. What's in the bag? Your African costume, sir, should it become necessary. Oh, Jeeves, can't you do it? I'm sorry, sir. What if I were to say the word Cuba, Jeeves? Not even then, sir. Five throws a penny, win any prize you bring. Yeah. Now, madam, can I interest you, perhaps? Five throws a penny, any prize you bring from a selection of magnificent prizes. Three balls for a penny, win the prize coconut. <sighs> no, not like that, you namby-pamby. Get me some more water from the pump, will you? I don't want to leave you. Oh, Gussie. I could stay there watching you pour tea for the rest of my life. Oh, Gussie. Oh, oh, oh. Can, 
Which is the Benin bronze head and which is the Maconde mask? The Benin bronze is the one at the back. Isn't Harold being helpful, Uncle Watkins? Yes, yes, yes. Doing very well. You are going to let him have a vicarage, aren't you? So that we can get married? Oh, I suppose you know what you're doing very well. Oh, Uncle Watty! <laughs> Wonderful! Uncle Watty has given Harold a vicarage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing here? Oh, Roderick Spode's looking for you because he wants to tear you limb from limb for kissing the cook. Did you kiss the cook, Gussie? Yes, he did kiss the blasted cook. Spode's looking for me? He says he's going to tear your legs off. Your neck, you think not? No! Yes. Harold! One of you do something! I'm a coward. Wise to remove yourself, do you think, Gussie, before Spode comes to? <gasps> Five pearls a penny, win any prize you ring. Now, Spode's seen him kissing Emerald, and he's going to break Gussie's neck. Come along, ladies and gentlemen. Stinker socks Spode on the jaw. Can you stop doing that for a moment, Jeeves? We mustn't neglect passing trains, eh? Nor would it be advisable to neglect the matter of the statuette. It seemed to be a question of now or never, sir. You mean... Particularly with Major Plank approaching us at this very moment, sir. What? Oh, my God. Inspector Witherspoon, what on earth are you doing here? <clears throat> I'm working undercover, as we say, sir. Call me Jeeves. Jeeves. Oh, right. Ah, yeah. oh, Major Plank. Good of you to come. Afternoon, Sir Watkin. Seen a little exhibition yet? Exhibition? No. Come and have a look. That totem I bought off you as pride of place, of course. Gussie, there you are. The urn's nearly empty. What have you been doing with yourself? There's nothing in here. Spood shook me, Em. That gorilla. Oh, you poor lamb. <laughs> Think not. <laughs> I say. Leave Gussie alone. Oh, no, my dear. Not at all. He was warned. He saw me remove my glasses. When I remove my glasses, those who know what's good for them head for the hills. I hate you. I hate you. You hate me, do you? I do. I loathe you. In that case, I shall now eat a ham sandwich. Oh, flesh! <laughs> good afternoon. Come along, Emerald. Vicarage, Uncle Watkin. Oh, hello, Major Blank. My dear, what vicarage is that, Stephanie? The vicarage that you're giving him. You appear to be under a misapprehension. But you said just now... I was not aware, when I spoke as I did, that Mr Pinker was planning a brutal assault upon the Earl of Sidcup. <laughs> this is a George II brandy pan I picked up in Bournemouth. I like the good room. Round the um... dragoon, yes. Here we are, your excellency. Stop! Who the devil are you? Uh, me, Chief Ndingo, and me come from far across Great Water. What? 
Chief Mdingo, come claim tribes. Uh, uh, thing. Uh, he travel uh, many days on much big iron boat. Much big iron boat? Much, much, much big iron boat. You steal tribes thing. Mdingo, come take him back. I've never heard so much tingle tangle in all of my life. Mdingo, him not speak tingle tangle. Mdingo say, uh, him thing, much magic, my tribe. Would you mind repeating that? No, not at all. Him thing, much magic, my tribe. And Mdingo say, where are you from? What? What tribe do you belong to? Uh, uh, well, uh... Krua Yako Garni. What's going on? I'm looking for Sir Watkin Bassett. That's me. Ah, Sir Watkin. How do you do? My name's Toto. Uh, Chief Toto, for my sins. Uh, yes? Uh, look here, this is really very embarrassing for me, but it's about that uh, doodad you have there. What about it? Well, the truth of the matter is it should never have left the tribe, and I'm here to get it back. Wait a minute. If you're the chief of the tribe, mm -hmm. who the Socrates is this? <laughs> I'm the foggiest. I uh, must consult with uh, elders of tribe. <gasps> Do you know who that was? Alpine Joe! It's Woody Plank, isn't it? Yes. But Toto, how the devil are you? It's been a few years. You're still on your quest for the perfect prop forward. Oh, yes. You see, Can we get to... back to the matter in hand? I'm sorry, but I bought that totem fair and square. Yes, 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 of course. One does understand. But you see, it's one of these blasted tribal things. I mean, one doesn't want to appear crass or anything, but uh, one did wonder if um, <clears throat> this might be some recompense. <laughs> We were at Harrow together. H.P. Pinker. H.P. Pinker? Not the H.P. Pinker. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Sir Watkin will feel differently tomorrow. Stinker. Good Lord. Buffy Toto. <laughs> You're H.P. Pinker, aren't you? Prop forward for Oxford in England a few years back. Yes. What an honor. Look here, I'm desperate for a prop forward for the Hockley come Meston side. Oh, I don't think... Uh, look, I may be talking out of turn here, but we need a new vicar as well. <laughs> you wouldn't be interested in a vicarage, would you? We most certainly would. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I say. Marty! Marty! Anywhere? Yes, he's somewhere about, dressed up in some ludicrous costume. Why? I'm going to marry him. <laughs> Madeline said she's going to marry that idiot. What's the what? But she can't. Well, he's worse than that fish fish blighter. I know. Far worse. Oh, I must talk to her. Is this true? You're going to marry Worcester? Yes, Roderick, it is true. But you can't love a half-witted, half-baked idiot like Worcester. Lost me, Roderick. You must have seen that dumb, worshipping look in his eyes as he gazes at me. You can't marry Worcester, Madeline. You can't. You can't. Mr. 
there was a there were some Your Highness? Uh, thank you, Major Major. I'm still working undercover, Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> this is what can I? Sir. Can't you do anything, Jeeves? I'm sunk, scuppered, madly embasseted at last. I'm sorry, sir. Jeeves! Cuba! The top on leaping! You really think such a trip might be feasible, sir? Yes, Jeeves, yes, two weeks in sunny Havana. Your predicament does present almost insuperable obstacles, of course. All right, three weeks. Perhaps I might be able to manage something, sir. A month, Jeeves. Four whole weeks, and I'll throw in the Alpine hat. Leave it to me, sir. Sit cup. The guests are all assembled. Everyone's there, are they? Oh, yes, sir. Perhaps you have hidden depths, Worcester. Is that it? I don't think so. No one's ever mentioned it, anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. Little Madeline has consented to be the next Countess of Sidcup. What? She has done me the honor of accepting my proposal of marriage. <laughs> Another glass of champagne, sir? I'm so happy I could sing. Well, you've come to the right shop. Oh, my gee, my gosh, my gum, my joe. Oh, my jove, oh, my jove, oh, my jove. Oh, my jingo, won't you hear our love? Will you can you raise your voice? Louder! We will build for you a hut. Yes, yes. you will be our favorite nut. Right. We'll have a lot of little oh, my joveses. Dress them up in clogs and clothes. Oh, my gee, my gosh. Oh, my gum, my joe. Oh, my jove, oh, my jove, oh, my jove. Oh, my jingo, won't you hear our love? Will you can you raise your voice? Louder! We will build for you a hut. Yes, yes. you will be our favorite nut. Right. We'll have a lot of little oh, my joveses. Dress them up in clogs and clothes. Oh, my jingo, set by gosh, my G. A, B, C, D, E, stop. Oh, by Jiminy, please don't bother me. <laughs> so they all went away saying, oh, my G, my gosh. on a clean plate. 